What's going on, action takers? Today, we're going to be talking about actionable steps you could take to increase your positivity and help you be happier. How's it going? Dr. Tank here, board certified practicing pharmacist and personal health coach, helping action takers like you take back control of their lives for a more healthier, happier life. Although I am a practicing medicine specialist, I'm not your medical specialist. So if you have any questions regarding your condition, see your doctor. Let's get into it. So who's this video for? If you're struggling with negativity and need actionable steps to help increase your mood, this video is for you and you're gonna wanna watch till the very end. So who's this video not for though? If you have clinical depression or have medical conditions preventing you from improving your mood, please see your therapist or medical doctor instead. This video is only for people who are able to take actionable steps to increase their mood. This video comes to you through an article from Psychology Today that talks about 11 things you could do to increase your positivity and therefore increase your mood. I'll link the article below. The first thing you want to do is you want to gauge your positivity. There's a test in the article that helps you determine your positivity. The things we do in our lives become our habits and define who we are as a person. So therefore, we're sometimes not able to see or gauge where we are in terms of positivity. So, in order to do that, there's a test that they link in the article. That way, you're aware of where you stand. You could see whether you're a positive or a negative person. And if you're aware of how you are, then you're able to choose whether you want to change or not, as opposed to if you're unaware, you're not able to even choose what you want to do. The next three things we want to do involve the past, the present, and the future. So step two we want to do is to strengthen our memory for positive information. When we're remembering things, we want to remember the positive things that happened to us, the things that made us laugh, the things that were heartwarming, and the beautiful things we saw. This is important because repetition of these positive memories strengthens them. As opposed to negative memories, if we were to ignore them, it would be easily forgotten. The third thing we want to do is to strengthen our brain's ability to work with positive information. This requires working in the present. If you're in a moment and you're trying to evaluate it, try to see the bright side of things. In addition, if you're in a negative situation, try to learn from these situations. What's the lesson you can take from this? That way you can make changes in the future because life isn't about make, not making mistakes. Life is about learning from them. The fourth thing you want to do is you want to strengthen your brain's ability to focus on the positives. Once you're able to find the positives in step three, you want to be able to focus on them. What gets your attention will get your focus. And if you don't focus on the negative aspects, they'll start going away because you've strengthened your brain's ability to focus on just the positives. The fifth thing you want to do is you want to condition yourself to experience random moments of positivity. This is where I disagree with the article. The article says that you want to associate random things to positive emotions. This requires a Pavlovian repetition that would associate the two. And this requires a lot of time. I say take advantage of the pre-wired associations in your brain. There was a study that showed that children who were blind were able to show the body language associated with victory and confidence. In victory, they raised their arms, chest, and head to show signs of confidence. How can you take advantage of this though? What you want to do is, if you're feeling down, raise your arms, head, and chest in the air as high as you can because it's hard to ignore the association in your brain that's already pre-wired there. It'll reflect the confidence that you show outward inside of you, and it will increase your positivity. The sixth thing you want to do is to think positive, but not too much, or to think negative when you need to. The mistake people make here is that they think that in the extremes, you're functionally useful when you're not. If you're excessively happy or angry or sad, it doesn't help you because you get swallowed by the emotion. Thinking in the other direction helps you take a step back. The second mistake people make with this is that they think that negative thinking is bad. It's not. It allows you to think in the other direction from too much positivity and it allows you to function better because you're able to take a step back. 
This allows you to take advantage of your emotions instead of them taking advantage of you. The seventh thing you wanna do is practice gratitude. On social media, we always see the bright side of people, the things they are happy about and the things they wanna show off. What we don't see is everyone's struggles and dark side. We all struggle with something and we never show it online. So it gets filtered through and we only see positive things thinking the world is always positive when we're not. Stop comparing yourself to other people. In addition, there are billions of other people without food, shelter, or water that we don't see online. Stop for a moment to yourself and quietly think of all the things you're grateful for. The eighth thing you wanna do is savor the good moments. In today's society, we're always looking for the next rush and we're always moving. If you've ever had a moment with friends where you've just laughed hysterically to the point of tears, you wanna enjoy that. That's what life is about. It's those moments. And you enjoy it by taking a quiet second or two to just absorb it. You also wanna show gratitude to the people around you and thank them for being in your life. These are the moments that life is about. The ninth thing you wanna do is to generate emotions from watching fun videos. Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok are famous for having short clips. If you bookmark your favorite clips and enjoy them, you're able to enjoy them later when you're looking for a pick-me-up. The next two things are associated, so I'm gonna talk about them in one breath. You wanna stop minimizing your successes and you wanna stop all or nothing thinking. These two are important because they celebrate all the journey you've made towards progress. The first one is you wanna celebrate your milestones by stop minimizing your successes. These milestones are the progression you make towards your journey. And they're important because they help you celebrate victories in the process. If you don't celebrate your victories in the process, who's gonna celebrate them for you? In addition, these small milestones and victories help you adjust your route as you're going towards your goal. If you don't make adjustments on these milestones, you're gonna end up way off course. And that's why it's important for the next step is to stop all or nothing thinking. When you have all or nothing thinking, your only target is the goal. You don't have slow progression. If the goal ever moves or changes, you're screwed. Life isn't about not making mistakes. It's about making mistakes and learning from them and adjusting in the process. If you're having trouble implementing any of these or want to take back control of your life, click on the free webinar below. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. And until next time, guys, stay healthy.